the medieval warm period was simply a standard feature of all kinds of historical and other literature going back a hundred years. Nobody doubted that it existed. Paul Johnson in the Offshore Islanders says as though it were entirely uncontroversial. And the fact of the matter is that it is entirely uncontroversial, that one of the things that favored Anglo-Norman rule following the coming of William the Conqueror was the fact that, quote, the period 1050 to 1300 was one of the warmest and most favorable climatic periods in historic times. Warmest and most favorable. Yes, indeed, that's the combination. Well, mid medieval warm period is so recent, you know, it's only a thousand years ago, that there are actual historical records, descriptive records by humans about, you know, when the harvest time was, when the last frost was. So there's some of that. We know that people were able to grow wheat and uh, other things that in marginal areas where you can't grow them today or at higher, higher altitudes, higher latitudes than we can grow them today. So that's another piece of evidence. You can get that from just records of taxes and things like that, ties to monasteries. Uh, but you can also look at the oxygen 18 ratios uh, of carbonates and you know, other chemicals formed at that time. And uh, that also tells you something about uh, the temperature. And all of these are in rough agreement. So I don't think there's much doubt that it was uh, quite a bit warmer during the medieval warm period. Every school child knows that the considerably warmer weather from around 1000 AD until some point in the 14th century is why the Vikings were able to sail to Greenland and once they got there, were able to farm there. There is no question that there was a medieval warm period and that it was at least as warm as today and very probably warmer. But the alarmists have to get rid of it as well as other earlier but well-established periods of warming and cooling because their thesis depends upon this notion that the climate of the earth at least in the last 12,000 years was essentially stable until the first Nixon administration. The places where people live were chosen because of the climate pattern that has been pretty much the same on earth since the end of the last ice age 11,000 years ago. Try and picture a very thin layer of gases, quarter inch, half an inch, somewhere in that vicinity. That's how thick it is. It's in our atmosphere. It's way up there at the edge of the atmosphere. And for millions of years, <coughs> literally millions of years, we know that layer has acted like a thermal blanket for the planet, trapping the sun's heat and warming the surface of the Earth to the ideal life-sustaining temperature. Average temperature of the Earth has been about 57 degrees Fahrenheit, which keeps life going. I don't think it's unfair to draw to your attention here that John Kerry, while he was United States Secretary of State, said publicly that the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere forms a layer just a quarter inch to half an inch thick at the very top of the atmosphere as well as the temperature has been stable at the only temperature that can really sustain life for millions of years. This is astounding scientific ignorance. How does he think plants absorb CO2 through their leaves if it's all at the top of the sky? As Michael Hart puts it with respect to this, climate changes always. The idea that at some point there has been or ever could be a stable climate around a long-term norm is a political rather than a scientific assertion. And I repeat, everybody knows.